welcome to the video thanks for tuning in again so today i thought how about i take you through what i do normally on a day-to-day -day basis since we're all on lockdown and we're all are forced to do this online learning and that is such a drag so how about you guys join me as i do one of my favorite models to be quite honest this was not really a favorite of mine i really disliked it because everyone has a bad experience of it um the model is doctors as change agents but i think it's growing on me day to day it reminds me of the reasons why we do these things and the topics that we are doing this week are actually quite interesting if i must say myself so what they did is they gave us a lot of topics to cover for this week and hey, they gave us so many reflections to do so please do stay tuned and let's do this together agents and communities you might ask why do we need to do that uh, i feel like because most of the students especially medical students are so sheltered throughout their lives that um some people would not even understand and comprehend why would patients not come to the hospital to come and fetch their medications but then again with modules like this uh students become more aware of the fact that if your patients let's say stays far from the hospital and they need to use transport to come to get their medications sometimes the only money that they have would be either to come to the hospital to fetch their medication or buy some food for themselves and their families so most people will then make the decision to either to rather buy food and not come to get the medication so but then as a doctor when the patient let's say comes back after three months you become upset because they defaulted and they shouldn't do that which is understandable they shouldn't do it and you have every right to be upset but also now you need to consider other things why is my patient doing all these things what can i do to help them who can i refer them to so now you start to broaden your horizon and your eyes to realize that there's other members of the professional team that you can get involved you can get involved the social worker to see how can we help this family so we're just like this i this week really with this block so the block is four weeks so it knows, it's not going to be too long and now we're doing week two but the problem with the whole block is the fact that it has so many reflections to write to be written like for this week alone i think we have to write nine reflections and a couple of them actually due tomorrow but luckily for me i have done most of the reflections so i'm hoping that today i'm gonna finish all the reflections for the week and the content for this week and we better show you guys what we need to do for this week take this out of the way and show you guys so these are some of the tasks that you have to do for this week so we're doing intercultural communication and then we have to do also patient-centered care and also become health advocates sometimes you need to know that you need to fight for your patient and fight for the right things so yeah so basically this is what happens all the material for the week is already online and then you would watch powerpoints videos i've done a lot of those um yesterday we did something i learned something actually quite new intersectionality um i'll explain it what it was about intersectionality it was quite interesting the fact that um as people we don't exist in compartments we literally are existing as a whole and we have, we are multifaceted like let's take for example uh myself the society already puts me at a pedestal that I don't deserve to be on because I'm a medical student. So for me, I feel like I never have to prove to people that I'm, I'm smart, even though I don't think that I'm, that I'm smart. But, all, but if somebody were to ask me, what are you studying? And I say to them, oh, I'm doing medicine. They already put me at the pedestal to say, oh, you must be very smart. Whereas someone else will have to be asked a lot of questions to prove to themselves and all of that, which I don't get to do. This is what this profession gives me, the privilege that it comes with. Um, the fact that I'm a man as well, society already, my culture already puts me at another higher level to say, oh yeah, women compared to you are supposed to be below you and all those. So those are some of the things. And then the fact that I'm a member of the queer society puts me at a disadvantage. The fact that society frowns upon us, my religion frowns upon it, and there's a lot of judgment. So now you see the skills are being tilted downwards also. The fact that I'm a black person, also um, I'm not the ideal person in the society because the white man is supposed to be the one. So you see it, so there's different aspects. So a person can be oppressed in 
many areas of their lives and also they have to recognize that they are privileged in other areas of their lives. The fact that I'm an able-bodied human being, I don't have any disabilities, so that also is a privilege that I have. With someone who is disabled, society looks upon them with a different light. So, yeah. So I'm currently watching Isabella's story. She's a, a trans woman that I spoke about briefly. So the video is like 42 minutes, but I'm gonna like invest 42 minutes to watch it. I'm not gonna watch it or anything. I'm just gonna watch it and hear her story because I have to reflect on it at the end of it. Like I said, the uh, video is on YouTube if you want to watch it. Let's watch it and then we'll reflect together on it. I just said to my mom, that I didn't want to be a boy, I felt like a girl, and that I'm sick of living in this body. Was it making you sad? A little. And how did mum and dad react? My mum was rather calm about it. So was my dad. So I just watched um, Isabella's story and one thing that resonated a lot with me from that video was the fact that she kept on um, emphasizing the fact that it is not nice being trapped in a body that is not yours. And that really um, poses a lot of questions to us as a society because I truly believe that there's no one absolutely no one who wakes up one day and says i want to be hated i want to i want to go through life that is so difficult and the transgender community goes through so much on a daily basis from people judging from people having remarks from people saying they are crazy and then you have religion as well people tell you that oh god doesn't make mistakes and it's a whole lot of things that we say we spread so much hate and all when all someone is trying to do is to live their lives or just like this to introduce us to this chat so that one day when i'm in a hospital and this happens then i know how to react then i know what to do exactly if a transitioning person comes in and they want to transition using hormones you need to be able to have that chat with them and not try to change them because if there's one thing that transgender people have is that they are very clear it's not a thing of, mm, I'm not sure. They are very clear. They are very insightful. They have made researches about this. They have thought about it. It's not uh, a rush decision that you made. Probably they went back and forth with it for such a long time for them to reach this. And in one of the questions that we have to reflect on, the question says, um, what do you think we as the families, as a society can do to help facilitate their well-being and for me at the top of my mind it goes support 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 i'm going to just type this reflection quickly after the reflection is done i'm going to return, go to the next aspect the next aspect of this week's topic it says that um being a healthcare practitioner with little resources so now we're going to rural health to say that okay what are you going to do when um, you want to save the world, you want to do all these things, but there's no resources, which is something that pushes a lot of doctors out of the profession because sometimes you really go into medicine wanting to do so much to help people. And once you are in, you realize that 
actually there's not really that much you can do because the system is so broken and working in a broken system ultimately sometimes breaks people as well so yeah i hope you guys are enjoying this video this is like some of the things that you go through as a doctor that you're gonna go through like like we said medicine is not great anatomy it's not chicago medicine we hoped it was i mean maybe in the most aspected maybe in tertiary hospitals you see that i mean there wasn't capable as well and we get all of that but in the real world it's not always that so yeah let's me do that uh there's two videos that i'm gonna watch on that and then I will then have to reflect on that as well. So yeah, let me just reflect on Isabella's story, then watch two videos on what you can do as a healthcare professional, professional with few resources, and then reflect on that as well. It has a 500 to 750 words. We will do that today as well, and then I'm gonna go into the next topic, which is. So yes, I'm back. I managed to reflect on the being me task, and then now I also watched a video on um, working as a doctor in a healthcare system with limited resources they gave us two videos one video was the pillow pepper train i don't know if you guys know the train but i actually know the train quite well because um i remember growing up my uncle no my grandfather actually once got glasses from them so now what happens with the train is that um the train moves from uh, rural areas to rural areas so it goes to places whereby the healthcare system is not so good so the train goes to a place and then it stays there for five days and then they try to help people as much as possible and then they move on to the other places so they will offer dental services they'll offer some optometry services and then they'll offer like all the whole wide of uh different departments within that um period but however the problem that they experience um, especially in this video as well was that sometimes like so many people come and you cannot help all people so you can only take a limited number of people and help them and unfortunately you'll have to turn others away which is not really nice and it is quite sad and even in this video it was something that was popping up a lot and to see uh, the nurses the fact that they she wanted to do so much but because of the resources she couldn't do really much and she had to be very uh, content with that knowing that you know what the help that you are given to the people is literally a drop in the ocean and that's exactly what sometimes medicine is going to be about you're not going to be able to change the world and do amazing great things but you can change like someone's entire world one person and you need to be comfortable with that so if there's one thing that this blog is really uh helping me with is to make me understand and realize why i'm really doing this again um the fact that primary health care is where it's at if you can find our people at that level you can prevent so many things from happening you provide patient education at that level you do disease prevention you provide people with tools to be able to help themselves so yeah so there's a reflection on that as well it's 500 to 750 words on that but also ugh, they also gave us like uh, another video is quite long it's an hour long video on um doctors without borders i think um let's see Anna Freeman is going to tell her story on the road with being a nurse on this journey. I mean, I've watched a couple of Doctors Without Borders movies before. This one is an hour 14 minutes. I was hoping to have also to also do um, what is it? Um, patient centered healthcare uh, today, and then tomorrow I know I just do health advocacy because I thought I was going to do everything today, but now finish everything off today actually because I started everything yesterday but now the problem is um the videos are quite long and I also don't want to do a rushed job end up not watching stuff so I'm gonna watch this doctors without products um one hour 14 minutes video and then I will reflect on this and then um yeah if there's still a bit of energy to continue I'll definitely continue to do patient centrousness but health advocacy i think i'm not going to do it today because i did take a uh an overview look into the task and i realized that it's actually a lot of videos that need to be looked at so yeah let's do this first um yeah let's check out what anna freeman has to say about her 
drop on Doctors Without Borders. True, so finally, I finally managed to finish watching the Doctors Without Borders videos. It was a one hour long. Whew, you can even see it's almost that time now. I hope the quality of this video is going to be great because if it's not great, it's going to be very awkward because I really put so much into like, I wanted to really show you guys so much of what we do here, especially with this blog and yeah, because I feel like it's a very nice blog for one to do. So with the Doctors Without Borders video, it's actually also on YouTube. If you check out Anna Freeman, um, Doctors Without Borders videos, it's supposed to pop up. It's an hour video. So basically they were telling us um, what are some of the things that they did when they got to these areas whereby there were no resources and then they had to survive there. And it's quite amazing. So even with the reflection, the questions were very specific about the videos to say what are the innovations that they came up with and how they navigated their way around that. So to make sure that I had a proper reflection, I tried to take notes as far as I went. So yeah, it is like with all these notes that's gonna help me to write a proper reflection. Don't mind my handwriting. I'm a typical, typical doctor, especially with the handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but don't worry, it's perfect on other days. Some days it's not so good, but anyway, we move. I also managed to watch a video on patient-centered communication. So basically there, what they were doing was the fact that um, there was a language barrier. So it was a white doctor and a black lady. So he tried to explain her condition, which was this lady had suffered from hypertension. She had problems with compliance. So the doctor was quite upset over that, but he tried to get the message across to her. So when he realized that there was a language barrier between the two of them, he tried to dumb down the information, which is not cute. Please don't do that. One day when you're a healthcare advocate, there's absolutely no need for you to talk to a parent as if you're talking to a five-year-old, you know? So, but what thing that I like is that he eventually saw that mm -mm, that was not working out so he tried to get um actually he didn't try he got a translator to come and help but also the way he went about doing it for me it also didn't sit well with me he did tell the patient he stepped outside and he found someone and he told the person to come in I mean I felt like the patient was supposed to be told is that okay I'm, I think I'm going to get um, a translator because there's a language barrier between the two of us and I'm really trying to get this information across to you. And um, the interpreter really helped. She was very nice and yeah, so it was, it's some of those things that we face. I know this vlog seems to be all over the place, but yeah. So I'm going to try to write this reflection and read up some more on patient-centered communication and do the activity that I need to do for it. And then I'll end it there for today. And I'm gonna do health advocacy tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna shoot that as well because I'm trying to get a ring light first. So hopefully I will shoot next week's topic. Hopefully they're gonna be quite nice as well. Thought-provoking as always. And yeah, if you made it to this far, thank you so much for joining me. So if this is your dream, you, I think you can go to see. This is some of the things that you go to do. You sit here from morning until evening. That's just how online learning goes. They think that you're at home all the time. So all that you're doing is studying. I mean, we also want to go outside and get some vitamin D and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to do this. Then I'll try to edit this video if I'm happy with it. I'm going to publish it tomorrow, Thursday, the 4th of April. If I am not happy with it, oh my goodness, I'll have to destroy it. Hopefully, it's not going to get to that. So, until the next video, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and perhaps what's that thing? Like this video and share it with so many friends. Go to 1.5 subscribers. Cheers.